Ah, yes. Weekend at Bernie's, a film that has been firmly ingrained into the American pop culture psyche. A film that's been homaged, lampooned, and referenced in countless movies and TV shows. It's such an iconic film that even people who haven't seen the film will know exactly what you are talking about just by saying the title. It even briefly had a trope named after it on TV tropes. So now comes the part where I ask one very simple question. Is it even a good film? I mean, I know it's a popular film, but just because a film is iconic and even has an original high concept premise attached to it doesn't automatically mean that it does everything right or is even any good. I mean, keep in mind, the film was slammed by critics when it was first released. And even the general audience reception itself isn't particularly strong. But still, there is a very strong cult following for this film, and it must have done something right if it's managed to remain a household name even after all these years. So, which one is right? Was this film unfairly dismissed by the critics, or are people overcompensating positive praise for it because of its concept? Well, I'm going to take a look and discuss my thoughts and opinions on the cult classic Weekend at Bernie's and see where I lie. Before we jump into the review, here's a brief rundown of the plot in case you don't know. Weekend at Bernie's is a 1989 dark comedy directed by Ted Kocheff. Yeah, the same guy who directed First Blood. This film follows two low-level employees at an insurance company who discover some insurance fraud going on at the firm and report this discovery to their boss, Bernie Lomax. As a thank you for this discovery, he offers them the opportunity to spend the weekend at his Hampton Island Beach house. Unbeknownst to them, however, he is the one who embezzled that money and the invitation to his beach house was merely a setup so that he could have them both killed. However, Bernie's mob partner, rather than killing off those two, decides to knock off Bernie instead. Not just because he'd gotten careless with his fraud, but also because Bernie's been sleeping with his girlfriend. So the two guys show up at the beach house, only to find Bernie dead from the mob hit. But before they can call the police, guests show up at Bernie's house for a party, and, much to the guy's shock, none of the partygoers take the time to notice that Bernie is actually dead. Seeing as how they would rather spend their weekend partying at the Hamptons rather than being interrogated by the police, they decide to continue the ruse that Bernie is actually still alive for as long as they can. So there's a positive that I can check off right from the start that most of you watching probably already agree with. This is a good high concept premise. While you can definitely see some potential limitations from that premise, you can also see how you could center an entire film around it. Now what's interesting about this film in particular is that this isn't the first time that this trope has been used. Clue, for example, had done this for a gag just four years prior. In fact, this actually seems like an extra step from a common comedy plot element in which characters simply attempt to hide a dead body in comedic ways, like in The Trouble with Harry and Faulty Towers. But this was the first time this trope was done like this. The film's entire selling point, in fact its only selling point, was that the main characters are trying to fool everyone into believing that a dead body was still alive by manipulating and moving his body around. Usually when it was done previous, it was a one-off gag, or was more about hiding the corpse. But here we have an entire film that's based around a variation of that one gag. This might explain why this film really struck a chord in the American cinema goer consciousness. It truly was a new and original concept at the time. But as I said, a good concept in and of itself isn't enough to guarantee a good film. I've seen lots of films that had good concepts but were badly botched. It's all in the execution. So the question is, does this film take advantage of its premise? I mean, it kinda does alright, I guess. But I also couldn't help but feel like more could have been done with it. Something this film doesn't quite understand is that comedy isn't just about the comedic setup and the jokes that they tell, but it's also about the characters that they happen to. Take the zipper gag and there's something about Mary, for instance. That joke isn't funny because some random guy gets his zippers stuck in his scrotum. It's funny because it's happening to this particular character. 
Because he feels like a well-rounded and well-written character, and because we understand his motivations, we are able to identify and empathize with him more, which in turn makes the situation all the more funny. If the joke had just started with the zipper gag without any background or context or frame of reference, then the joke wouldn't work because we would have no attachment to these characters. And these characters in Weekend at Bernie's are... not the best written. They mostly seem to be going for broad stroke archetypes rather than actually trying to write good characters. Larry is the slacker who always gets Richard into wacky hijinks. Richard is the nice guy with a stick up his butt who constantly lets Larry talk him into his crazy ideas. This is not a new comedic dynamic and the film adds very little to their characterizations beyond these stereotypes. Surprisingly, Bernie actually gets more characterization than they do, and he dies 40 minutes in. He even gets more development after he's already died. Like how apparently he's so terrible in the sack that his mistress describes sexual intercourse with his corpse as being an improvement. Apparently, when he was alive, he was... Well, a little too quick on the draw, shall we say. Either that, or once he got what he wanted, he didn't bother trying to please her. Uh, sorry, that got a little bit off topic. Anyway, back to these two guys. Are they at least passable characters? Well, I'll say this. They do not start out that way. In particular, I was having some major issues with Richard. He was awful at the start and was horribly written. I guess they were attempting to go for the lovable, awkward, goofball vibe, but he instead comes across as someone with absolutely zero social skills and it is painful to watch. Want proof? Well, there's this scene. Okay, talk to me. No, I don't want to. I can't. Would you talk to me? Would you stop? Talk to me. She's right here. Okay. Yes, I want you to talk to me. Okay, shut up. Okay. 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 Excuse me. Um. My aunt is very sick. And how about this? Okay, this goes beyond no social skills. This is third rock from the sun levels of no social skills. It also doesn't help that his comedic timing here is just off. It feels forced and artificial rather than spontaneous. It takes a lot of effort to make that kind of awkward clumsiness feel natural, and it just straight up doesn't here. But things do improve once they actually get to the beach house and are actually given good material to work with. Sure, they might strain credulity with their stupidity at times, but they do at the very least feel a lot more comfortable and at ease once the film finally sets in. And honestly, th that is easily my biggest gripe with this film. The setup simply takes too long. It takes almost 45 minutes into an hour and a half long movie before the main gimmick gets introduced. The film actually spends quite a bit of time on its surprisingly convoluted setup. I mean, first they have to establish who these main characters are, then they have to establish this romance between Richard and Gwen that actually takes up a pretty solid chunk of the first half. Then they have to establish that they discovered the insurance fraud. Then they have to establish Bernie. Then they have to establish that he has a mob partner. Then we have to establish that Bernie's having an affair with his mob partner's girlfriend. Then they have to establish that Bernie wants to kill Larry and Richard. Then they have to establish that the mob boss wants to murder Bernie instead. I mean, there is a crap ton of information and setup being thrown at you, and it can be overwhelming. And in a comedy, more so than any other genre, pacing is crucial. If you take too long to get to the main gimmick, especially when most of what's happening in the first half isn't really all that interesting or funny, it can kill the momentum stone dead before the film even gets a chance to get off the ground. Then by the time the film finally gets to the good stuff, it's already too late to win the audience over. Also, relatively minor thing, but these two could not have done a worse job at keeping their affair a secret. Especially when you consider that her boyfriend is a literal mob boss. I... I have to get going. It was delicious. No, no gentlemen, I really must be going. 
Thanks for dinner, Vito. I gotta go powder my nose. Yeah, I'm sure he doesn't suspect a thing. Forget the accident with the two guys. Take care of Lomax. No, oh, what a shock. He suspects a thing. So you've been pretty much hearing me complain about this film's flaws, and you're expecting me to say that this isn't a good film, that it's truly awful, and it deserves to be forgotten. But hang on. While this film certainly has its flaws, and many of them are quite apparent, this film does have some strengths that are worth acknowledging as well. As I hinted before, the film starts out rather poorly, but the film does improve once they find Bernie's body. Once it hits that point, the film is pretty consistently entertaining. The funny thing is, you'd think that a film that mostly consists of one joke would get rather tiring pretty quickly, but surprisingly they manage to find a way to keep the material fresh. On top of that, I do quite enjoy some good old fashioned slapstick, and the film manages to make it well timed and executed well enough so that it doesn't come across as annoying. And believe it or not, this film actually manages to have a reasonable and surprisingly rather plausible explanation for how so many people could manage to think that the obviously super dead Bernie Lomax was in fact still alive. Here's where the film's genius comes into play. See, while most people would take a look at this plot and go, seriously, are all these people that stupid? Can they seriously not tell that that dude is dead? This film actually manages to work around that hurdle with a little bit of social satire. If you'll notice, most of the people that get up close to Bernie's corpse want something from him. That guy who wants his car, the woman who wants a book review on the front page of the paper, even his girlfriend is so self-absorbed that she can't even notice he's dead, even while she's literally having sex with his dead body. It's a brilliant statement about the self-absorption that is endemic to high society. They all want something from him, and are all too wrapped up in their own selfish wants and desires, so none of them even come close to picking up on the signs that he's actually dead. To say nothing of some of the tinier little details that I liked, I like the subplot about the hitman who keeps killing Bernie, only for him to reappear alive and driving the hitman totally nuts. Terry Kaiser does a really good job playing the corpse. I never had a problem believing that Bernie was really dead. I also liked the joke about Larry having a fly swatter handy to keep the flies away from Bernie's corpse. And the stunt work with the boats, while nothing all that special, are well done and it harkens back to the bygone aspect of comedy that favored big set pieces of chaos and destruction. Honestly, I could talk specifically about individual elements that I liked, but that would ruin some of the jokes for those that haven't seen the film. The thing that I will say about the second half is that I did laugh, and even when I didn't laugh out loud, I was amused by the wacky comedy antics. Now granted, humor is very subjective, so it can be difficult to say whether or not someone would like a film like this or not. The only thing that I can say is that me, personally, I laughed enough that I would say this film is worth checking out, even if it's far from perfect. Weekend at Bernie's does take a little bit to get the plot moving, with a surprisingly dull and lackluster first act. Even when the main gimmick is introduced, not a whole lot is really done with it until the third act finally comes in. But once that last half hour finally rears its head, we are treated to some genuinely great physical comedy, and the slapstick timing works surprisingly well. Had the film kept up that same manic energy throughout the majority of the runtime, this could have been considered one of the truly great comedies. But the film as is works just fine. The scenes that don't work aren't really awful per se, and are vaguely engaging at the very least, so it's not like you have to suffer through a bunch of crap to get to the good stuff. Honestly, I think critics were a little too harsh on this film, and based on what I've seen it almost seems like they were objecting to the film based solely on the premise. But in an age where comedy has gotten a lot meaner and crueler, this film almost fits right in. It's flawed to be sure, and not a comedy classic by any means, but it's not the cinematic comedic wasteland that has been made out to be either. It's decent enough that I think it's worth checking out for yourself if you're at all interested in seeing in it based on the premise. So for my final verdict, I will say that Weekend at Bernie's has a definite, if slightly faint, pulse. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like and sharing it. If you have any films you'd like to see me tackle in the future, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. I'd be more than happy to hear your suggestions. Links to all my social media are in the description below. Have a good day, and I'll see you next time.